Today, I'm here with a brand new Crusader build that is made for PvP. This one is brought to us by Ytry over in the Revenant's Discord server. I'm gonna be breaking down this entire build here today and then giving you more gameplay, seeing how well this one works in action. But to start, let's pause this video and let's pull up the actual skills and build right here. In addition, I'll be linking the Revenant's Discord server in the description of this video as a thanks to Ytry for sharing his build. He was the man always sharing with me barbarian builds. Then he switched to Crusader and hasn't switched back in a while. So he's starting off right here with draw and quarter. It's one of the skills you're going to always find yourself using inside of the game if you're a Crusader. Next up is Holy Banner. Then he uses Conjuration of Light and following that, Falling Sword. Now it's not, and of course, Sacred Fire as the primary attack. Now it's not about what skills he's using, but more about how the essences are broken down. We're gonna look at the secondary set items right now to start things off. And as you can see, as we see in many builds, he's going with the Vethu's Urges, a two-piece set, the duration of all beneficial effects on your party members uh, by 30%. So that's a nice one right there. We see it in builds for all classes all the time. But the next one is quite a bit different. Check this out. Untouchable Mount Bank. Each time you take damage, you have a 20% chance to gain a shield that absorbs damage equal to 13% of your maximum life. Cannot occur more often than once every nine seconds. Then you have another portion of it where the shield damage absorption is increased to 33% of your maximum life, and you can move unhindered through enemies while this shield is active. So what this tells me and what should tell you already about the build is that you are building a build that has sustainability. You can get into these battles, move freely, and not take damage, rather than maybe being a damage-dealing machine that we'd be looking for in something like a Barbarian. But let's move on and move over to the gear, the primary gear here, starting with the headpiece. Notice, you will also notice, his resonance is down, under 3,000 right now. He's actually switched out some of his five-star gems for one or two-star gems. Everlasting Torment, one being used right here. I actually love this because, to be honest with you, if you're focusing on one and two-star gems, ones that are actually attainable for you to be able to max, you could save them in your bag and switch them in and out based on what classes they work better for. Whereas if you're playing with five-star gems, it's gonna be much harder and more expensive and time-consuming to get the gems where they need to be. And then if you're not using them, you're looking at them like, man, that is good food for another gem. So I like the idea of ones and twos, and I think I'm gonna be building my build on that format. So what we see right here out of Arrow Keeper is Commander is the Legendary Essence. The Inspiration of Holy Banner now moves with you. Holy Banner cooldown is reduced by 7.2%. And what you'll notice as well is it has a, an additional stat. That's because the gear is awakened. It's an awakened gear slot, which means he paid the 10 bucks or whatever it is to awaken the gear slot, giving you an additional boost and allowing you to put more resonance inside through other gems. And we could talk about that in another video if you don't know what I mean. But right here, he has a max level gem in there, so it's been awakened, and he also gets Holy Banner cooldown decreased by 10%, which is pretty darn big. Moving on to the chest piece, he has the parrying plates, and he's using a max level pain clasp two-star gem. Steadfast determination is the essence. Conjuration of Light now grants immunity to knockbacks and loss of control effects, but it no longer provides immunity to damage. Conjuration of Light cooldown reduced by 7.2%. Again, this one is also awakened for those additional stats. Moving on to the shoulder, Wind Blessed Pauldrons. And there it is, the new gem, the Viper's Bite. Max level, Legendary Essence, Conjuration of Life dur duration increased by 39%, and the cooldown decreased by 10% because of the Awakening. We're going to move on to the Pants. Cavalier's Courtwear, a Blessed Pebble, one star gem, max level. Trample, drawn quarter, now damages enemies when you run over them and knocks them away, but it no longer drags enemies, which is fine with me. The damage is increased by 18% and an additional 10% because of the awakened piece of gear. Now, the first primary weapon is Little Lance. He's going with a 
Fervent Fang Gem, a rank 10. And as you can see, Surging Sword. Falling Sword instead causes you to surge forward with your sword up to three times, damaging all enemies in the path, and the damage is increased by 18% plus another 10. This is going to be a nice mobility skill that we'll see very soon happening in the footage shared. And the Luster Titanic, a Bottled Hope. So there's the five star, a four out of five star rank six Bottled Hope. And he has here Legendary Essence, Holy Banner, now also reduces continual damage taken by allies by 40%. The Holy Banner cooldown is reduced by 3.6. And now we're getting into the stance slots. The second primary weapon is Overseer. He is using a Seeping Bile here, a four out of five star. Enemies struck by Punish take 19% increased damage for subsequent hits for two seconds. The effects stack up to a maximum of 57%. This slot does not have an awakened bit to it because the gem is not max level. And then Gimcrack Buckler, a 2 out of 5 star, rank 5, Gloom Cask gem inside. Again, you guys can switch the gems up as you feel fit. Legendary Essence, while Punish has granted you hardened senses, your blocks will trigger an explosion, dealing 6,000 plus damage to all nearby enemies, and it's increased by 90%. So that is basically all of the gear being used. You can see some of his damage stats, etc., here as well, and some more things over here that kind of show off his build. But now we want to take a look again at the build in action. And to do this, I'm going to kind of share his notes as well, because he did share notes with me so that I can share them with you guys. So let's dive in right here. Back, you can watch the build in action, and I will be reading what he sent to me as tips. I'll also be pasting all of these in the description below if you want to keep a, a read on as well. The crowd control immunity build is a complete 180 twist on the typical tank satyr. It's very offensive, a lot of short burst damage and long cooldowns and reduces your survivability immensely as the main focal point of the build is the chest piece pairing plates. He's actually saying something different here than what I said earlier about how its damage uh, relates, but Take his word for it. This gives you immunity to all control effects while Conjuration of Light is up, but you are no longer immune to damage. All right, so the damage immunity is taken away right there. Since we're immune to control, we have we can make use of Drawn Quarter 2, and nothing can knock you off the horse or interrupt you while you run through everything carelessly. Get near the enemy, and just before you counter them, you encounter them, start the Conjuration of Light, Holy Banner, and then lastly, Drawn Quarter, all with these three all active you want to immediately charge into battle going as doing as much damage as you can and watch the remaining duration of conjure of light once this is near its end back away from the fight and use your three dashes of falling sword if needed to heal up wait for cooldowns and go again i love how he's talking about how you use this in battle that's extremely useful the four piece mount backs is a must not only does it give you a nice shield each rotation, but the four-piece bonus also allows you to run through anything unhindered. We did we did point that out. This includes things like necro bone pillars and bone walls or barbs stone circle, for example. So not only are you immune to crowd, crowd control, but nothing can get in your way or trap you, which is something that frustrates all of us when we're doing PvP, when you get stuck by a necro, right? But this is going to prevent that from happening. Since this is purely offensive take on the Satyr's class, I'm also using Executioner Paragon Tree to aid in getting quick kills. With just 2,800 resonance, dealing, dealing with 5,000 plus resonance players in a single match on the way to Legend, I was still able to pull off these kill streaks and finish with 59% win rate. Very valuable build for sure. All right, so he's going up against people more than double his resonance and he's seeing success getting kill streaks like we're seeing right here here are some tips that he's given us needed as much cooldown reduction as you can get up to a maximum of 30 percent on conjuration of light as this skill was the longest cooldown neck two rings and gloves can all roll skill cooldown reduction as a magic property having shoulders or chest awaken gives another 10 percent cooldown reduction each with the rank 10 gem socketed in them, of course. 
beneficial effect duration is also crucial to stack there as this directly alters how long you can run through enemies before you're susceptible to control effects again. Waste, boosts, chests, and legs can all roll beneficial effect duration as a magic property. You can also get it as a reforged property on all eight primary gear pieces. Blessed Pebble Lego Gem gives 18% at rank 10, and of course, Two Piece Vithus gives you an additional 30% on top of this. That's his breakdown in depth, sharing how this actually works and what each piece is actually doing for you. I appreciate him breaking it down so that we can have a better understanding rather than me just sharing you with you what pieces we now know why those pieces are there as well. Remember, the Revenant's Discord server is where Why Try resides. He's there for questions, ideas, and his server actually is a great place and an informative place for anyone that's a Diablo Immortal player. Hope you enjoyed this Crusader build. Find it useful when you go into Battlegrounds or really in any PvP uh, modes inside of the game. We'll be back with more builds, more Diablo Immortal videos, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out.